أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد Once again everybody السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I want to start introducing Surah Al-Ikhlas to you but first of all by saying that the Prophet ﷺ had a special love for the Surah The most beloved of the prayers it seems in the Quran that's highlighted like no other prayer is the Fajr prayer Allah calls it Quran Al-Fajr the, the word Quran is not attributed with any other prayer the way that the Fajr prayer is that's why it's called Quran Al-Fajr the Quran of Fajr time the Prophet ﷺ in the Sunnah prayer of, of Fajr would regularly recite Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Kafirun. So both of these surahs he would recite very, very regularly. On top of that, there are several, not one, several occasions in which the Prophet ﷺ in one way or the other described the surah as a third of the Qur'an. This is important not just because that's a reinforced concept. In other words, okay, fine. It, it's value reciting it once. It's like you've recited a third of the Qur'an. It's actually also important that the Prophet ﷺ kept re-emphasizing that. He kept saying it over and over and over again. This is a telling thing because the Prophet ﷺ doesn't do this regularly for so many other surahs you don't find lots and lots of narrations about a surah over and over and over again but you do that do find that for this surah in particular and it's perhaps because of that emphasis that you find this curious hadith that I'll read on to you that the Prophet ﷺ uh, uh, came across a person There was a man who used to read, lead the prayer and every raka'ah he finished, he would finish it with Like he would pray all the time And so The Prophet ﷺ said, go ask him, why does he do that? For what purpose does he, does he recite the, the, the ikhlas all the time? فَقَالْ أَنَّهَا صِفَةُ الرَّحْمَانِ He said because it's the it's attributes, it describes the most merciful. Even though the word Ar-Rahman isn't here, this man saw that Surah Al-Ikhlas has the, the mercy and the love of Allah encapsulated in it. صِفَةُ الرَّحْمَانِ فَأَنَا أُحِبُّ أَنَ أَقْرَأْ بِهَا So that's why I love that I lead the prayer with it. Remind people of the love and care and the the essential qualities of Ar-Rahman, of Allah. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, أَخْبِرُهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّهُ The Prophet ﷺ said, go tell him Allah loves him. Tell that person Allah loves him. So his love of ikhlas led to Allah loving him. So we should have a special love for Surah Al-Ikhlas. So the question arises, what's so special about Surah Al-Ikhlas? I mean, it seems like it's teaching a really basic lesson. Allah is one, he doesn't have children, nor was he begotten. Done. Nothing can be compared to him. Seems like very simple, basic concepts of Tawheed. So what's the big deal about Surah Al-Ikhlas? You should understand something here. The Qur'an teaches three fundamental beliefs. The Qur'an teaches about God, the Qur'an teaches about the afterlife, and the Qur'an teaches about revelation. Three things. Basically, every other belief falls in one way or the other under these three, you know, Iman Billah, Iman Bil Akhirah, Iman Bil Risala. Faith in, faith in God, faith in the afterlife, faith in revelation. You know, even if we say we believe in angels, it's the angels who deliver revelation. It's the unseen, right? We, once, once we say we believe in Allah, it's all of His names, all of His attributes, all of His doings. When we believe in the afterlife, it includes what happens in the grave, judgment day, heaven, hell, all of it, right? So if you look at it that way, one third of those is just belief in Allah. And that belief in Allah is summed up better here than anywhere else in the Qur'an. If you understand what this surah is saying, then you're good to go. You've, you've accomplished one third of those essential faiths and actually the other two are only a necessary consequence of this first one. You will only truly believe in the afterlife if you believe in God. And you can only truly believe in revelation if you believe in Allah to begin with. So the other two are actually spawned out of this faith, the faith in Allah. That's one thing. And the other thing that I feel is equally important is its placement. You know when people start out on a project, on a, on a task, and they've been struggling to accomplish victory and get somewhere with it for a long time. Along the way, as you gain more and more victory, it's easier to lose sight of why you started, where you started and why. The Muslims have had many battles with the Quraysh. They've gone to conflict multiple times. They've gone back and forth. And now finally, Islam is going to be victorious. And one day when it's victorious, you might lose. Why were we fighting? Was it for territory? Was it so we could break idols? Because it became us versus them, not us for a cause. Our cause is not versus them. Our cause is something much greater. 
And our cause was, is, and always will be the unique faith, faith in this unique, unparalleled God. The oneness of Allah. Why are we trying to liberate the Kaaba? So ikhlas is established to Allah. People only and only worship Allah. So after describing إِذَا جَاءَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ After opening the doors to that victory by getting rid of Abu Lahab. Now Allah says, never lose sight of your goal. Why are you believers to begin with? Why are you struggling to begin with? What does the entire life of the Prophet ﷺ culminate in? It culminates in instilling this sincere love and loyalty and worship to Allah in, in every human being's heart. That's why the Kaaba was liberated, and that's why Surah Al-Ikhlas is so, so important. And that's in a sense why the Prophet ﷺ would keep reminding the believers of this surah because it reminds them why they are Muslim to begin with. What this deen is all about. It's about their relationship directly with Allah. From a, you know, if I was giving a lecture on this surah all out, I would describe to you the remarkable linguistics of this surah. I mean, it is absolutely fascinating from a grammatical point of view that the word Allah is followed by the word ahadun, you know, and then the word Allah is repeated again, Allahu samad, and then the, there's no alladhi, there's no ism masul. Instead of saying Allahu samadu alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad, it breaks off and says lam yalid wa lam yulad. But that's for another time, inshallah ta'ala. For now, all I want to share with you is, uh, you know, why is it called surah al-ikhlas? The word ikhlas is in the surah. The word ikhlas is not in the surah. This surah is actually about refining your faith in God and purifying that faith. And what we're learning is the more you're in your mind and in your heart, that concept of Allah is refined, the more sincere you will become in everything that you do. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us all sincerity in everything that we do. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.